should a Christian do this? It's not about what a Christian should or shouldn't do. A Christian does not look like the world. A true believer does not do things like the world. Because of who he is, there's no such thing as impossible. Hey, what's up friends? Jeremiah Mensa here with Unashamed City, where it is our mission to know Jesus and make Jesus known. Thank you for joining me once again for a very short message this week. And this week, the title of our message is Your Reality in Christ. Your Reality in Christ. So if you're ready, let's dive in real quick. We begin at 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, where the Bible says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Again, I'll read it just so it sticks in our spirits. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, of course, a lot of Christians are familiar with this verse because it's, it's one of the most common verses used um, when we go to church and things like that. But for some reason, the truth and reality of this verse doesn't really fill our hearts and our minds it doesn't really enter our spirits so that we can really live it out so that's what i want to take some time to explain today that when the bible says you are a new creation in christ it's not saying that you have to do something to become a new creation it's not saying if you try hard enough you will become a new creation it's saying if anyone is in christ right here right now you are a new creation and it this is the present perfect it is it's right here and right now just like you can say right now i'm watching this video right now you are a new creation and this this truth has to be applied to us not just by memorizing the verse and not just knowing it um and, and hearing it over and over again but by truly understanding this verse, we, we can live out what it means to be a new creation. So you, you are not trying to become a new creature. In the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant, God gave the Israelites the law because they asked for it. They asked for God's law and said it will be their righteousness if they do everything that's there. So God gave it to them and their whole goal was to do these things so they could become righteous. Obviously, we know that didn't work. So God is not doing the same thing in Christ. Instead of telling us to do stuff to become righteous, no, God makes us righteous. And because we are righteous, we now live out or live according to the righteousness that He has made us. God flips it because the first time it was obvious no one can attain righteousness by doing anything. Unless God has made us righteous, we can't even live um, according to the righteous nature. We can't do anything to please God unless He first makes us righteous. So the new creature has been made righteous in Christ right here and right now. So it's not because of what you do or don't do. It's not that if you go to church, then you're a new creature, or if you don't go, then you're a new creature. It's not that if you party, you're not a new creature, and if you don't party. It, in Christ, it's not about um, a law like, oh, do this, or Christians should do this, or Christians should not do No, no, no. It's about this is who a Christian is. So based on who a Christian, a true believer in Jesus is, not just a Christian by name, but a true believer in Jesus, based on who they are, this is what they do. Based on who we are as new create, creatures, this is what we do. So do not flip the script to, to make it seem like you have to do something to, to, for this verse to become a reality in your life. Now, as a new creature, you have, certain, you have access to certain realities in Christ. And why is it called a reality? It's because Christ is not just a name. Christ is not just a title. Christ is not just some fancy word for the Messiah. Christ is a realm. Christ is a plane of existence. That is why you are in Him. The only way you can be in something is if it is around you. I can't say you are in a bubble of soap because the, the bubble of soap cannot cover you. 
So the only way to exist in Christ is if Christ himself is an atmosphere, if he's a realm, a plane of existence. And it's just like, you know, the physical realm or the physical plane of existence, the physical things that we see and interact with, they are part of the physical reality. So an example of a physical reality is gravity, right? As long as you're in the physical plane or the physical realm, gravity is a reality for you. Time, you, you, you experience the passage of time, okay? You or everything in this world goes through decay. Anything that does not have life in it decays. If you pluck a, a, an apple from a tree and leave it for a few days, it will decay. It is a reality of this world. Our bodies, because they are imperfect, they are decaying. It is a reality of this world. So in Christ, you also have certain realities. And the first reality we really need to understand is that we are new creatures in Christ. We are completely new. When it says old things have passed away, that word old things means the original. The original thing. We were originally conceived and born into Adam's sin. We were, we were born according to the image of Adam and because he disobeyed, the Bible says we all disobeyed in him. So when Christ obeyed and now we've been born of God in Christ, we also are made in the image of Christ and in His obedience. We live according to His obedience. There's nothing that we do to inherit the obedience of Christ, just like how there's nothing we do to inherit the, or nothing we did to inherit the, the disobedience of Adam. So if Christ obeyed in Him, we have also obeyed. That's why there's no law that holds a Christian. Now it is a, an issue of identity, an issue of identity. Do you know who you are? Because if you know who you are, then you will know how you should live. So because Christ is our realm, we have certain realities in him. And the first thing is that we are new creatures. So I can hear you um, right now like, okay, well, if, if we're new creatures, why do we still struggle? Why do we still fall? Why do we still go back to some things that we used to do? And, and why do those things affect us if we're completely new creatures? And the answer to that is... It's not that when you, you know, make a mistake or fall or do something that is not like Christ, that you have lost the, the, the nature that you have, you, you've been made in Christ. You haven't lost the new creature that you've become. Rather, you have forgotten the new creature that you've become. So because you don't remember who you are, you can't live according to who you are. And really, it's either you don't know or you don't remember. Because for some Christians, they don't take the time to study the Word of God. They don't take the time to read the Bible and pray and speak to God and know who they are in Christ. That's the first thing. If you see a Christian who is looking exactly like the world and there's no difference, but they truly believe in Christ, usually the first reason is because they don't know who they are in Christ because they don't read the Bible. But then there are those who do read the Bible, who do study the scriptures, who do um, understand who they are in Christ, but still fall. And the reason for that is forgetfulness. Forgetfulness. When you read who you are or see who you are in the word and you, you find yourself not living it out, it's because it's, it's, it's been removed out of your mind. You are not living according to it because you have forgotten what you look like. So if you don't know who you are, you can't really live according to that because you have no idea or you don't remember how you're supposed to live. And you may have heard this story, I'll, I'll go over it real quick, about the ego who um, gives birth or you know has a chick and the chick falls out of the nest and the chick grows up living amongst chickens. So it's an ego chick living amongst chickens on the ground and it's walking like a chicken it's it's eating like a chicken it's acting like a chicken everything it has never flown in its life because it grew up with chickens now the story goes that one day this eagle saw another eagle that looked exactly like it did way up in the sky soaring above the clouds and the eagle said wait hold on so if if that 
ego looks exactly like me, why am I stuck to the ground? And so the ego realized that, no, I don't even look like these chickens. We may have grown up together, but once we grew, we, I realized that I was way bigger than them. I wasn't made for this. So then the ego realizes who he is and then flaps its wings and starts to fly. The ego was always an ego. But because it didn't know who it was, it never lived out who or how an ego should live. Now, if this analogy can be applied to the world and Christians, let's say we were all chickens, but by some miracle, God changed anyone who believes in Christ into an ego. You're not meant to stay in the same place as the people who do not know Christ stay. You're not meant to act like them. You're not meant to look like them. Not because you are judging them, but because you are different. You have been made different. You are a new creature. So the only way you can remember and know who you are is if you look into the word, see who you're meant to be, and let that be what drives you to live according to what you see in the word. Everything in our reality, everything about our nature and reality in Christ is in the word of God. Our problem is either we don't read it or we forget what it said. And this is what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. It says, But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. In other words, when you continue to look into who Christ is, when you continue to fellowship with the Spirit of God, who reveals Christ to you, you are transformed into the same image of Christ, according to Romans 8, 29. You are transformed into the same image and conformed to Christ. But the same Bible in, in the letter of James, chapter 1, verse 21 to 25, says this, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. And this salvation of your souls is not talking about the initial salvation when you come to Christ, but it's talking about perfecting you. The word of God is able to perfect you. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. So when you line these two scriptures up, the 2 Corinthians 3 and James chapter 1, one is saying when you look into the word of God and you fellowship with the spirit and you are revealed Christ, you are transformed into Christ. The, James is saying if you still look into, into the word and fellowship with the spirit and you are revealed Christ and you forget who you are in Christ, you can't live out that transformation. So one, you have to look into the perfect law of liberty and secondly, you, you have to maintain that, that memory, and not just the memory, but meditate on who you are in Christ. So just like the ego who looked at an, another ego and was reminded or, or taught who he is supposed to be, we also, our original ego is Christ. We look towards Christ and we remember that we are not bound to this earth. We're not, we're not like the world. We're not meant to be conformed to the world. So stop asking questions like, should a Christian do this or should a Christian do this? Ask, who is a Christian? Who is a believer? Because that is what determines what a Christian does. And by, by, by extension, shows you what a Christian does not do. Okay. It's inaccurate to ask you, should an eagle eat, um, I don't know, corn? Right? It's, it's, it's not a valid question, like should an ego eat corn or not? Because an ego just does not eat corn. It's not should he or should he not. He does not because he's an ego and he eats meat and fish. He does not eat corn. 
So should a Christian do this? It's not about what a Christian should or shouldn't do. A Christian does not look like the world. A true believer does not do things like the world because of who he is. So when you look at people in the world, it's not about judging them, but you are not the same. You are in Christ and your reality is different from theirs. One day, these people, by God's grace, hopefully will come to Christ and they themselves will start to be transformed. But you who have already been in Christ, the Bible says you're a new creature. Old things have passed away. It doesn't matter what you used to do. It's passed away. It's dead. God literally does not see those things when he looks at you. Because to him, that, that, that person, that, that you is dead. There is a new you born in Christ, recreated according to the image of God, who is Christ Jesus. And that new you has a reality, has several realities in Christ, the first of which being you are a new creature. So as we wrap up, meditate on this scripture, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. Write it somewhere, write it, put it on your wall, put it on your phone screen or whatever. And ponder on this word that you are a new creature. It is right here and right now. It's not in the future. There's nothing you need to do if you believe in Jesus. There's nothing you need to do extra to, to become a new creature. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. So based on the fact that you're a new creature, now you sit back and you can almost have an attitude you know, like royalty. Royalty will say, I can't do this because I'm the king. I can't do this because I'm the, I'm the queen. Right? So you now have an attitude towards sin, not towards sinners, towards sin. Like, I can't, I can't go do this because I'm, I'm in Christ. Like, what business do I have doing this? That's why Romans, uh, Romans chapter 6 says that how can we who are dead to sin continue to live in it? It's almost an attitude. Like, how can I do this? Like, I'm not, like, that's not me. That's not who I'm created to be. So, fam, like, miss me with that. I don't do this. And it's based on the fact that we're new creatures. So I don't want to make this too long, but I hope we get it. And I hope we understand. And I hope we really meditate on this verse. And understand that our deeds proceed out of our nature. So, God bless you as you meditate on this. God bless you as you ponder on these words. And I pray that he makes this so clear to our minds, not just to our minds, but that it starts to bear fruit in our lives. May we never forget what we look like when we look in the word of God and we see who we are in Christ. May we never forget this. And may we continue to live an unashamed life that is pleasing to God. Thank you for joining me. I love you and God bless you.